With Hurricane Michael cooling off as a tropical storm off the coast of New York, the true extent of the damage it caused to Florida's panhandle has become plain. Entire communities including Mexico Beach and Panama City have been ravaged by the storm which hit on Wednesday, bringing 155 miles per hour winds to the area. With the storm now clear of the area, authorities are working to recover any bodies from the wreckage that they could not get to when a storm was raging. They, along with energy companies desperate to reconnect the 1 million plus customers who have lost power, have taken to the skies in helicopters to survey the extent of the devastation and the results are sobering. 13 people are confirmed dead as a result of the storm, but officials fear that number may rise. Scroll down for video slide me 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 Mexico Beach was described as Michael's ground zero on Thursday by emergency workers. Mexico Beach took the brunt. That's probably ground zero, FEMA administrator Brack Long said. As camera crews flew over it on Friday including one belonging to CNN, stunned reporters remarked, it's gone. It's gone. Residents in other areas described the terrifying conditions as the storm hit on Wednesday including in Georgia, where they likened the noise of the looming hurricane to a train coming. On Friday, Virginia's Department of Emergency Management said five lives been claimed in the state. They include four people who were swept away by flood water and a firefighter who died in a highway crash. Sarah Radney, an 11-year-old, was visiting her grandparents' home when Hurricane Michael roared into southwest Georgia. She and her siblings were there on a fall break. Her parents decided cautiously to let them stay as Michael approached because they thought the home was powerful enough to withstand the storm. If the family feared anything, it was probably falling trees not a carport next to the house. In what could only be described as a freak accident, authorities say Michael's powerful winds lifted the portable structure high into the air and slammed it back down on the house. When it landed, one of the legs tore through the roof, fatally striking Sarah in the head. It also hit her grandmother, puncturing her in the lung and breaking her rib. Sarah's father and stepmother, Roy and Amber Radney, said Thursday that Sarah loved being around her big family and made everything more fun. Her grief-stricken father told the New York Times, before she died, that it was just hell. Last night was just hell. I'm an hour and a quarter away, and my daughter's dying, and I can't do anything about it. I can't think of anything that is more related to hell than that, he said. He urged others to heed warnings when they are told to leave their houses. I want people to know, man, when they say, get out of your house, leave your house, listen to them. When they say, no first responder is going to be able to get to you, they're not joking. Five people were killed in Florida after the storm devastated the state's panhandle. They include Steve Sweet, a 44-year-old who died in his wife's lap after an oak tree came crashing down on their home, crushing them both. His wife Gail was able to call her father and brother who came to the house and pulled her out from beneath the tree. They could not save Steve. Fire Lieutenant Brad Clark died at the scene when a tractor trailer hit his fire engine on Thursday night. The tractor slid into his vehicle on a slippery road. James E. King Jr., 45, also died being swept away in his vehicle after being caught in a flash flood. Another man, 
whose name has not yet been released, died in a storm-related traffic accident in North Carolina on Thursday. More than 1.2 million homes and businesses were without power from Florida to Virginia on Thursday because of the storm. The number of people in emergency shelters was expected to swell to 20,000 across five states by Friday, said Brad Keyes, chairman of the American Red Cross. Meteorologists watched satellite imagery in complete awe as the storm intensified. We are new territory, National Hurricane Center meteorologist Dennis Felgen wrote on Facebook. The historical record, going back to 1851, finds no category for a hurricane ever hitting the Florida panhandle. Under a clear blue sky, families living along the Florida panhandle emerged from shelters and hotels to a perilous landscape of shattered homes and shopping centers, beeping security alarms, wailing sirens and hovering helicopters. Governor Rick Scott said the panhandle woke up to unimaginable destruction. So many lives have been changed forever. So many families have lost everything, he said. The full extent of Michael's fury was only slowly becoming clear, with some of the hardest hit areas difficult to reach because of roads blocked by debris or water. An 80-mile stretch of Interstate 10, the main east-west route along the Panhandle, was closed. Some of the worst damage was in Mexico Beach, where the hurricane crashed ashore Wednesday as a Category 4 monster with 155 miles per hour winds and a storm surge of 9 feet. Video from a drone revealed widespread devastation across the town of about 1,000 people. As thousands of National Guard troops, law enforcement officers and medical teams fanned out, the governor pleaded with people in the devastated areas to stay away for now because of hazards that included fallen trees and power lines. I know you just want to go home. You want to check on things and begin the recovery process, Scott said. But we have to make sure things are safe. The Coast Guard said it rescued at least 27 people before and after the hurricane came ashore, mostly from homes along the Florida coastline, and searched for more victims. Among those brought to safety were nine people rescued by helicopter from a bathroom of their home in hard hit Panama City after their roof collapsed, Petty Officer 3rd Class Ronald Hodges said. A dramatic video shows the moment members of the United States Coast Guard rescues a trapped woman in Florida. In nearby Panama City Beach, Bay County Sheriff Tommy Ford reported widespread looting of homes and businesses. He imposed a curfew and asked for 50 members of the National Guard for protection. The hurricane also damaged hospitals and nursing homes in the Panama City area, and officials worked to evacuate hundreds of patients. The damage at Day Medical Sacred Heart included blown-out windows, a cracked exterior wall and a roof collapse in a maintenance building. No patients were hurt, the hospital said. The State Mental Hospital in Chattahoochee, which has a section for the criminally insane, was cut off by land, and food and supplies were being flown in, authorities said. Landlines and cell phones also were down to the complex, which has nearly 1,000 residents and more than 300 staff. They relied on emergency radios to make contact with first responders. About 2 million ready to eat meals, 1 million gallons of water, and 40,000 10 pound bags of ice are ready for distribution in Florida. As the storm made its way inland, it caused havoc in Georgia, spinning off possible tornadoes and taking down power lines and trees.